Hello, my friends, and I hope you are having a fantastic day. First, I would like to thank you so much for being understanding about not having a video yesterday. I'm obviously sounding better. I'm feeling a little better. Uh, and to prevent a relapse, I am not going to cover the Dragon Age Veil Guard thing that just came out. I watched it once. I will cover it later. I'm just, I'm not going to do it today. However, what I am going to cover is in the PlayStation State of Play, the successor I guess would be a good way to put it, of Ghost of Tsushima, Ghost of Yote, has been announced. And there are definitely some very mixed feelings about it on the internet. You have a number of people who are more than willing to give Sucker Punch the chance to prove to them that this isn't going to be something insanely woke, despite the fact there is a female protagonist. And then you have the other side who is, of course, very upset that there is a female protagonist and feel that that this is an obvious sign that the game will be woke, for lack of a better word. I hate using that word. And of course, the voice actress and model for the character herself does not help. She has been very proactive, one might say, in blocking a number of people on Twitter, even people going so far as to defend her right out the gate, thinking that Sucker Punch has earned their patience in deciding whether or not this game will be what they hope it's not. And with that being such a ongoing topic and this article coming across my feed at the same time, I figured we would go ahead and take a look at it. This is from Automaton. This is a Japanese originating news company. Obviously, this is on their West section, so their section for English speakers, but the articles tend to be a, a little more from the Japanese perspective as opposed to from the American's perspective. We're just going to go ahead and jump into this. Now, this does say that the new title takes place in 1603, which is 300 years after the events of the first game in Japan's northern Hokkaido region. The brand new protagonist, Atsu, is set in the land surrounding the titular Mount Yotai, a mountain that exists in real life Japan. Sucker Punch has said that they looked beyond Jin Sakai's story and the island of Tsushima and shifted our focus to the idea of the ghost instead. This idea of the ghost and the way the game title, The Ghost of Yotei, encapsulates it, caught the attention of Itsugi Tengiku, a Japanese scholar of Anu culture and language. For context, the Anu are an indigenous ethnic group from Japan's northern regions, including Hakado. Commenting the upcoming Ghost of Yotai, Tengiku notes, the fact that the Ghost of Yotai is set in Hakata, Japan in 1603 is amazing. It encompasses the meaning of ghost in many ways. It has to be intentional. He goes on to explain that Mount Yotai was in fact not called Yotai in the year 1603. The mountain was originally called Menchinishiri by the Enu people, but the Japanese started calling it Mount Shirabeshi from the, from the Meiji period, which was 1868 to 1812 onwards. The name Yotai was later derived from Shirabeshi, making its use in the Ghost of Tsushima sequel very anachronistic. Believing this to be an intentional decision by the developers, Itsuji comments that in the year 1603, Mount Yotai is very much a ghost toponym. And for those who may not know, toponym is a name for a geographic location. The scholar also weighs in on the significance of the year 1603 itself in the context of Japanese and a new history. According to Itsuji, 1603 was the year before the government of the Edo period Japan gave a single aristocratic family called the Matsume clan the exclusive rights to trade with the Anu people. This was a turning point when the Anu people's dominance in the Hakado region gradually started to crumble. By 1603, the Anu still had the upper hand over the Japanese, but starting from 1604, the Matsume clan excluded other northern clans from trading with them and imposed themselves as the representatives of the Japanese people. Within 200 years, Hakado, the home of the Anu, was completely transformed into a fishery. This was the beginning of the colonization of Hakado. Itsuji suggests that against this background, the ghost of Yotai's name might even be satirizing colonialism. Although the details of Yotai's plot remain shrouded in mystery, we may be looking at a potential Anu revenge drama. And I'm going to say right here is going to give people some extra ammo in regards to their idea of the direction 
of the game, the satirizing colonialism. Because let's face it, who wants to hear about colonialism in your Japanese game? There are, of course, many people who are saying, why is there a female involved? Now, before go, anyone goes too far off the rails with the thing about, you know, historical accuracy and all that, female warriors were, in fact, a thing in Japan. They are documented. They are something with, this is not, in short, a Yasuke situation. This is something that really happened. Now, will this game be accurate towards that? We don't know yet. Uh, they were known as the Onomusha. They fought beside male warriors in Japan. Now, they were rare. That is definitely for sure. Uh, this article I found does have at least three notable female war warriors. Empress Jingu, who was born in 169 AD as one of Japanese most famous figures. When rebel forces killed her husband, Emperor Chao, Empress Jingu became so enraged that she, she swiftly eradicated the rebel forces. She then led an army on an invasion of a promised land, which many considered to be Korea, for three years before returning home. Empress Jingu was also the very first Japanese woman to have her likeness printed on Japanese currency. Although there was a tremendous artistic interpretation used as there were no actual images of her to work from. Tomo Gozen uh, was alive during the late 12th century. Tomo Gozen was a skilled, formidable warrior. Having served the samurai lord Minamoto no Yashinaka, Tomo Gozen became immortalized in the tale of the Hikei, a chronicling of the Genpei War of the 12th century. Tomo Gozen is particularly famous for beheading Hondo no Morishige of Musashi for killing Uchida Iyoshi. I apologize to everybody if I miss pronounce anything horribly because i'm sure i have and then finally nijima ye born in 1845 and died in 1932 nimija ye was one of the last samurai in history belonging to the hoshina clan she fought during the boshin war between 1868 and 1869 she also served as a nurse during the russo japanese and sino japanese war later in life nijima ye became an educator and scholar advocating strongly for women's rights. It kind of makes sense. So this isn't something without precedence. Yes, they weren't exactly the most common thing, but there were a number of very famous ones. Apparently, Ye here was one of the best gunslingers in the country. The big questions will be, how did they change the writing? Did they focus really hard on this idea of colonialism? Honestly, from the trailer, I didn't think the graphics looked that great. They didn't look as good good as they did in Ghost of Tsushima, but maybe that will change between now and the release. Realistically, you know, I don't blame anybody who is hesitant on supporting the game. I also don't blame anybody who really feels that they can give it a chance. There's plenty of room on both sides of this. So however you feel about it, that's cool. I liked Ghost of Tsushima. To this point, I don't see anything particularly alarming about this one. I probably won't get it on release, but that's more because it's not a game that would be high up on my immediate need to play list, as opposed to absolutely anything else. In the end, we'll really know when it comes out, because there will be those people who check it out. And they won't be games journalists, <laughs> because those people will lie to us. That'll definitely tell us a lot of stuff what the games journalists say going forward. But all that said, guys, what do you think? Are you hesitant about this game? Are you excited for this game? Do you not care? Let me know down in the comments. I did want to mention really quick that tonight I will be on the Offensive Charm podcast at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Mountain. If you want to stop by and catch that, the link for their channel will be down in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the notifications. Uh, if you really liked it, you can feel free to share it around, and I will catch you later.